Hello. Welcome to the Field of Streams, where I, your host, Janine McRae, bring you the tiny thoughts that stream from my brain and present them to you as though they're an automatic triggering of the song lyric, You've been hit by, you've been hit by a smooth criminal. Every time you win an argument. Mmm. Annie, are you okay? Now, I can't promise you much with these talky things, but I can promise you this. I won't keep you long. Promise like that deserves a follow, don't you think? Tap that follow button. I will really appreciate having your ears tuned to my voice from this point forward. The episode that you are about to hear was inspired by Yoko Ono and a piece of her art, interactive art, or more accurately, instruction-based art, called Mend Piece. First shown in 1968, the installation, and I quote, invites participants to follow a set of instructions provided by the artist who's left an array of broken pottery fragments on two plain white tables with simple repairing materials of glue, twine, scissors and tape. There's a little sign that says, Mend carefully, think of mending the world at the same time. End quote. Cool. While reading the article, I've put a link in the description if you want to read it, I learned about the Japanese tradition called kintsugi. And I, <laughs> I of course, have to apologise for my pronunciation, which um, is, as always, terrible. Anyway, I'd seen kintsugi before, but I didn't know that that's what it was called. It's the art of mending or repairing pottery with gold, or more specifically, a urushi. Urushi? Oh my god, this this is murdering me. <sighs> a urushi lacquer that's dusted or mixed with powdered gold, silver, or platinum, and the results are, in my humble opinion, people, beautiful. I'd even go so far as to say, stunning. When the repair is complete, it almost looks like the thing that was repaired, whether it's a cup, a teapot or a vase, it looks like that's the way it's always supposed to have looked. Like you can see the fissures and the cracks where the the thing had broken, but those cracks are now gold. Reading about men piece while also learning and looking at a lot of kintsugi inspired me to write what you're about to hear. As an aside, since I wrote this, last October I went to the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art. I walked into a room and boom! There in front of me was Mend Piece. White table, pile of broken white crockery upon it, and some basic materials to mend with. I got so excited because I knew, I knew what it was. Before I even walked up to it, I knew exactly what it was. Guys, I know art! Unfortunately for me, it was a Tuesday and you were only allowed to interact with the piece on Wednesdays. So, bummer, denied. Whatever, doesn't matter. (sighs) Let's get into this. Let me read it to you now. Basic premise, we are, all of us, in pieces. But are we not all just a little bit beautifully shit? Sit back, relax, allow me to read to you a piece of my writing called... I am perfectly broken. I am a mend piece. I learned this term from Mother Yoko, she of the wail and the wander and doing her own thang, 100% of the right on sister time. Mend piece is not about people. It's about pottery. But it's about people now. It's about me. But isn't everything about me these days? I'm using that me in the royal we sense. The royal me is all of us. When I wrote the word pottery in the previous paragraph, I accidentally typed poetry instead of pottery. It was not the first time I wrote poetry instead of pottery when trying to write this piece, this mend piece, about the broken poetry pottery of me. Poetry is the unforced error my brain is making. I am a mend piece. I am made from several multi-syllabic pieces of broken poetry. Here is a haiku. A verse dropped from high, 
shattered haiku, broken thought, mend piece of mend peace. The mind piece, P-E-A-C-E, of the mend piece haiku remains unbroken, but the instinct is to smash it, now, and grab, and hide it away from your sight, to get out my dustpan and broom and sweep it into the garbage and away from the light. You get the drift. But where are my galoshes? Brain wants to jump in puddles and think more on it. Puddles are soft, but don't worry. My reflection breaks easily. I am a mend piece. This makes me also kintsugi. I learned this term from the same story about Mother Yoko's mend piece. I fall, I fall, I smash and scatter. From heights both great and subpar to the floor I go. Fall, fall, fall. Fall more, says the invisible force. Land awkwardly and twisted with boo-boos and bingles and crumbled core and exploded enamel. And then? Then reach for the gold and silver to mend peace again. Join my broken seams so that I may hold water. I am kintsugi, but only if I do the mending. Only if I do the work. And only if I allow my imperfect lacquer to be seen in the aftermath. My defects made viewable, my cracks celebrated for their ugly cry ways. Are we not, she says, and by she I mean me, and by we I mean royal, are we not in a constant state of falling apart? All our lives, smashing and dashing on the kitchen floor of lost love, chipping off our ego and sense of confident self with the hammers of hurt, mismatching our patterns as we reconstruct with the glue of learning and other twee phrasings? She supposes yes. We nod our heads as we touch our scars with soft fingers. She and we and they and them and he and you. All of us mend ourselves for the rugged road. We break out, we break down, we break. But who collects our chinaware now? How do we remember the shape of us if it is constantly on the mend? Where is my cabinet of curiosities with the fine bone and handed down great aunt tea sets? It's all me sets these days and we sets has too much baggage. The point? Kintsugi celebrates imperfections, calls them to the floor as the main feature of adulation. I am a mend piece, and I have made so many missteps leading to the cracked facades and shattered everythings that my failed audition instinct is to sit down and stop walking altogether. But I don't, and neither should you. Mend piece is a scar show, and there are lessons in the lines. Or to put it another way, in this violent crumble of life, it is really the way it shatters that matters. The violence of our failures, the messy teachings of our failed art, the wrecked relationships, heart horrors, financial fucked uppery, and more. This is the point. Glue, tape, gold. Whatever you've got, get to the mend. I am an imperfect being. I am difficult. I am sweet. I am sullen. I am open. I have jealousy. I have love. I rage. I meditate. Self-sabotage cracks and inaction fissures. I am broken in many interesting and horrendously mundane ways. I start too many sentences with I, but am aware of this. I am a work in progress, a human, a being, an I on the way to J. Mend carefully, instructs Mother Yoko's exhibit. Think of mending the world at the same time. It starts with us, you, me, royal we. Ourselves is our salvation. And through that, I don't know, perhaps that's where the world comes in. She said to think, I thought, therefore I am. Our shards, the mismatched pattern of us being constructed, deconstructed and reconstructed again in ceramic uncertainty our made holes and together agains. Don't hide that gold of life. Don't shroud your joins with cleaner cloths. Don't cold cream your wrinkles or dull your ragged seams with shame. Fear is a concrete floor begging to the bone. 
throw yourself down. Object not to the imperfect object, because while your freckles may come back misaligned or the patterns of your print left slightly askew, know there is magic in the misprint. This is your fine, your bone, your porcelain perfection. You were thrown, little pot, to break a thousand times in your lifetime and still retain the essence held in your mud. You were thrown to break. Look to the mend piece, the mend piece, the mend. This is you, this is me. And aren't we all just a little bit beautifully shit? And there you have it, today's episode. I hope you'll come back and listen to more episodes. These missives are designed to inspire creative folk to get out there and make something of their own. If you enjoyed what you heard today, follow the podcast so that you never miss an episode and sign up to read my writing at janemacrae.substack.com. But for now, I will leave you with this. Love what you love and I'll see you out there making stuff.